Good evening, Planet Earth, Lieutenant Obvious reporting. Welcome back to my brand new project, Sid Meier's Civilization VI Rise and Fall. So as you guys are probably well aware, Rise and Fall is the recently released expansion pack for Civilization VI. It was released on February 8th, 2018, which is about a week ago. And I'm having quite a fun time, at least is getting, getting to know it and to kind of familiar, familiarize myself with all the new features even though I've yet to go through a full game in the expansion which is what I plan to do right now with you guys in this playthrough so I made an introduction over the weekend it was released on Saturday and Sunday and basically what I did is that I started a game as Georgia with uh, the leader is Tamar and I went through in in the Emperor difficulty and so I was able to kind of see some of the some of the new leaders like Shaka Zulu and the Cree and Korea through that I was able to kind of see like some of the new leaders um, listen to see their new cities listen to their voices and then also I kind of dabbled in a little bit of the policies that are sorry the new features that are new such as the the uh, the loyalty then um, loyalty and then the an era score which gives you golden ages and and dark ages that type of thing so what I'm gonna do is that I'm um, going to go through a brand new a brand new playthrough and essentially start from scratch so this is gonna be my first playthrough with civilization 6 rise and fall so I'm going to be I'm going to be playing once again as Georgia with Tamar as the leader I'm gonna be showing the the parameters for the game setup right about now so essentially, it's on Emperor difficulty and in on a large map. And so I added two extra AIs. So ordinarily, a large map has ten players, but then it um, I added I added two extra AIs, has all nine of the new civilizations, and then three random ones. The only other things that are different is that um, I turn off religious difficulty because I usually don't play with that. I think it's kind of silly, and I made it a new a new earth a new map so basically it's um it's going to be a lot rockier and a lot more jagged and i kind of tend to prefer maps like that but without further ado let's get started on our very next well on our next but our very first playthrough in rise and fall from the first step. all right so here we are we are in the game so once again because this is my first playthrough through rise and fall my first i guess like official playthrough you get these screens here that um whenever you start with the rise and fall expansion pack and it goes over a quick summary of the new features of rise and fall so i went over these in the introduction video in case you did not see them in the in, in the introduction i'm going to go over them again although just kind of more quickly and not in detail so first off even though it's not on here 10 new leaders and so i did forget to mention genghis khan of mongolia in the intro videos but all 10 of the new civilizations including georgia who i'm playing as are in this are in this playthrough or in this game so i will meet them eventually so we'll go over all of their statistics as they come up all right so okay so there's things called historic moments so i guess like um everything's gonna be every uh major action in our civilization is going to be recorded on a timeline and, and a lot of the major moments the quote historic moments that they that they say will actually add to what's known as an era score and so then the era score is tabulated in the lower right corner of the screen over the by the action button which is which is what you click to end turns and then if you get so many historic moments within an era and eras are ancient classical medieval renaissance those type of eras then it affects how you how your civilization acts in the next one over so it's kind of interesting. So major ones would be like discovering a natural wonder. Minor ones would be discovering a or entering a friendly village. And so this just shows that uh, blue, make sure that you avoid a dark age. And then gold um, is how you enter a golden age. Now, loyalty is another big one. Loyalty has to do with a lot of other cities around you and then the pressure that they exert. So it has to, it also has to do with your happiness so loyalty is kind of a bitch especially when you're when you're in a crowded area with lots of cities or if you conquer new cities so i'm not looking forward to this 
although it does seem like it could be manageable. So governors are people who you can appoint who you can appoint to cities in order to give them loyalty but also to boost your loyalty but also to get some additional strengths to specialize your cities in case you want to turn your city like into a tech hub or an economic military culture hub so those are uh so those are good for specializing cities or balancing out cities and kind of improving their weaknesses so i have not been able to get a governor yet but i've you know that uh, you get governor titles as you do research, and then eventually I plan to get there. Alliances are now specialized, so when you declare friendship with somebody, you actually start a timer, and if you are friends with them for long enough, then you can enact kind of like additional goodies between yourself and the and the other and your your friend. So. A lot of these have to do with trade routes, but um, overall, like it's kind of a good dynamic because it seems to actually give meaning to friendship declarations. Then there's also emergencies. Um, the example they keep using is a nuclear nuclear weapon. So, for example, if someone uses nuclear weapons, then like everyone else can band together and respond to it, and they get a bonus if they succeed, or the aggressor gets a bonus if they fail. So this seems like, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, especially in the early game, but we'll get to that when it comes. <clears throat> and then the city banner is a little bit more, is a little bit more, has a little bit more information on it. So for example, that's your capital. That is your capital. That is your, um, that is your icon for your civilization, your religion. And those two arrows have to do with loyalty and happiness and your religion. And then um, that's the, that's your population turns till the next population growth. This is your this is your governor and then what you're building and then turns left to complete the building and then your defense for the city as a whole. So I guess I yeah, it helps you it is it gives you more visual information towards your city so you don't have to click on them as much and that's it. So without further ado, we're actually going to get started. So this is the map that I that I found. Okay? So essentially, um, I not gonna lie, I did take a little bit of, I did take a little bit of extra time to come up with a, come up with a map that I thought was decent. Part of the reason why I didn't think I was gonna do well on the previous map is that I did not, I was not that confident that that map was, was very good for me. This one seems kind of good. So essentially, we're on a river, and we are surrounded by chocolate or cocoa. Um. And stone, and then we have some bonus resource. Well, stone's a, bo a bonus, but then we have bonus resources of stone, cattle, and banana. And then we have a forest beneath us with like a little bit of rain. I presume some rainforest for the chocolate. And then we have some flat areas here, which is going to be good for agriculture. So, not perfect, mind you, but I think we may actually have a coastline. You can kind of see it through the fog of war over there. So, we may be kind of close to an ocean as well. So, okay. Not so bad. Now, George's unique unit, I forget the name, is actually gets a bonus when attacking in hills. So this could be to my advantage as well. All right. So I'm kind of okay with this location. So I'll just settle here. And Tbilisi. Not Tbilisi. I looked at it more closely and I realized there's an extra I. So Tbilisi, I think that's how you pronounce it, is my brand new capital. So... I'm going to try to cover as much territory as possible. It looks like, wow, it looks like there's a lot of stone around. So if I get a Pantheon, I think, um, what is it? Stone circles, like the one that gives you plus two faith for quarries might be a very good way to go. So as with all my new cities, I do like to grow as quickly as possible, but that does hinder my, does hinder my production. I guess two and two is... Not so bad. Um, so I'll... Since I have cattle right there, I'll, I'll select animal husbandry. Although, once again, it doesn't really matter because I don't have any workers. So you are at a serious disadvantage playing Emperor. Oh! So I get, I'll talk about that in just a second, but I discovered a... Discovered a goodie hut and then some barbarians. Interesting. So you're at a serious disadvantage with... Um, with or against the AI because the AI I believe gets two settlers 
and so pretty much <laughs> you're at the you're at the uh, you're playing catch up from the beginning and pretty much the only way you do catch up is if you you pretty much have to start wars and conquer so let's see what's in here hopefully it's a scout oh I got some population has accomplished something historic worthy of being celebrated and remembered for generations to come these accomplishments help our civilization reach a golden age and avoid a dark age right so then what our advisor is talking to us about is the this new mechanic for the for the era score which is shown down here and this leads to uh dark ages and golden ages so essentially because i cleared out that goodie hut right there the talk to the friendly villagers we had a significant event in our civilization so villagers bring gifts as they join our civilization so we got one era score and so it's tracked down there so you need 12 in order not to fall into a dark age and i believe it's 12 more so 24 to get into a golden as you said right there yeah so 24 or above will get you a golden age in the next era so we have a ways to go, but that's actually a really good start to start right away. Also, I'm going to comment, look at all the stone. So, I think definitely, I am definitely going for religion, for a pantheon. So, definitely going to go with stone circles. Like, especially this city right here, this will probably be my second city because very favorable. Because of all the very favorable, um, like, resources. You have, like, a reef and then some crab and then chocolate right there so that would be six extra fade for those three quarries seems kind of like a no-brainer crap so i'm gonna have to do with barbarians fairly soon not exactly a great thing but i guess what can you do i'll see about at least um if i'm gonna change course i'm going to at least poke these guys a little bit to get myself a little bit of get myself a little bit of um, experience but how did my scout how did I get my scout so quickly wasn't expecting to get my scout so quickly four turns I well yeah I guess I must have gotten okay so my population grew that's why all right so I'm going to build maybe two or three scouts, and then I think I might just have... I might kind of be forced to build a settler right away, just to at least kind of somewhat get myself on a level playing field. Now, that was pretty bad for my... Shit, I hope I did not just screw my, my warrior by doing that. Because I don't know if my warrior is going to be able to fend off an attack... Oh, okay, that's pretty damn lucky. I thought that almost certainly that um, that that spearman would have chosen to to attack, but hey, okay, I'll take it. All right, so up in the north here, it's just um the end of land, so no real don't have to worry about making further contact yet. Oh, okay, and then um, I'm revealing the map beneath, and it seems like I just have a ring of mountains. Heaven, then when I die, I want to go where they went. All right, so I have another scout. I'm going to have him go to the west. Meanwhile, I'll have my warrior rest, and then this other scout, I'll have him just kind of follow the coastline. Just kind of follow the coastline this way. Okay, so this is going to be really good. This kind of like this ring of mount, this mountain range right here. It's going to be really good for several reasons. First off, it's good for defense. So, for example, if I'm going to get invaded from the south, it looks like there's a choke point here, and then, and then it there's it a choke point right there, but then it allows me to focus defenses to the west of here. So, that's really favorable. In addition, it's really good for holy sites and for. Um, and for uh, campuses. So unfortunately, because you have the cocoa there, I'm going to build a plantation there because then I would have gotten really good. 
like a plus three bonus there and a plus three bonus there. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to compromise a little bit. Probably, um, probably have to take, probably have to use a different, um, a different space for my, uh, a different space for both my holy site and my campus. However, it's still really good. I'm glad I have it. Better than not. Okay, so we researched animal husbandry, and I think I would like to go with mining next. Actually, with this, I believe I'll build a second warrior just... Actually, wait. I'm going to build a... Um, not a warrior. I'm going to build a slinger so I can get the boost for archery. You get the boost for archery by killing a unit with a slinger. And after the slinger is done, I'll have, I'll have three population in Tbilisi. Then I should be able to pretty much just kind of beeline it to building a settler. And then place my settler right there in that pretty good location. Alright, so now I'm on the other side of the river. Let's see what kind of stuff I can find. So it looks like this is just all a coastline. Which is good because then I, I can pretty much just like claim the land. <laughs> I do like that. And frankly, um, all right, I have a barbarian warrior. Uh, don't really know what to do that much about. But honestly, this scout in all likelihood is going to go here. So then I'll be able to heal this guy and then attack the scout with the warrior. Actually, even potentially with that slinger. If he's still around. Yeah. It is not wisdom, but authority. Alright. So I'm gonna move this way so I don't have to worry about the um the the barbarian. Looks like that might be Korea right there. Recognizing those colors. Kinda close, but I mean I hey, I have I have a little bit of little bit of space then, at least. So this can move that way. Okay. What is this? That's this bananas. All right. So gives me a minor victory. Take it. Minus 30. Still going to be a couple turns till that warrior comes. All right. So I can choose... One of these, I, it doesn't really matter, I think. I'll I'll choose um, craftsmanship, I guess. Although I'm probably not going to be able to improve three tiles. So maybe I'll just go for discovering another continent. As for my policies, all right. So I realize I am, I am fighting barbarians, but I would like to get some, exper get some experience and make my scouts faster. So I'll use that. Um, I'm also interested in pursuing faith. So I am going to implement God King so I can get the extra faith. And so, yeah, I need 25 faith to found a Pantheon. That is pretty essential to my gameplay there. So I've now, met Korea. Alright, nice to meet you. Queen Seondok of Korea. Let's visit her capital. Sewon is our Sewon are the finest example of scientific and political thought. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for showing me where you are. Okay, that's not their capital, I'm assuming. I'm assuming their cap Oh no, that is a capital. Jungju. So we got ourselves a boost for Okay, so we got a slinger. So we got ourselves a boost for um, writing since we met another civilization. That's cool. Um, oh, it looks like we met the Cree also. Oh, jeez. Okay, so we also met the Cree. And that's... Okay, so I was not that upset with having... 
Korea right there. I'm a little bit annoyed to be so close to the Cree, mainly because now it kind of shifts me needing to settle here to I almost certainly have to settle like over here. Um, seeing here this area with two salt, salt is a luxury. So two salt, more stone, and then rice. I think this here is a pretty prime is a pretty prime place for pretty prime location for a city. Alliteration aside, um, yeah, I'll not be able to settle there to take care to uh, take advantage of that cattle. So I think I would need to settle that. So really, now that I have a now that I have a um, a free production over in my capital, I think I'm pretty much forced to build a settler, go there right away, and yeah, and then probably build a worker after that. So loyalty is going to be an issue. Loyalty is going to be a pretty... I'm not going to say it's going to be devastating, but it's going to be a pretty significant issue um, since I have these cities so close to each other. And you know what? Please die from my slinger. No, okay. But I did get some extra experience, so that's pretty good. So I take this guy out. And I'm gonna it gives me the boost for archery, which is awesome. I am one turn away from finishing mining. So that means that I'm gonna start archery on the next turn. So that's good. So I'm kinda disappointed I have not found any city states or any additional goody huts. Kinda lame, but the friendly villages are probably not necessarily mostly gone at this point, but um, a lot of the easy ones. When chances are they probably hole, quit digging. Yeah, they're probably not. Um, they're probably not around anymore. However, uh, pretty much have to deal with it once again. You kind of have to change your strategy over and over while you're playing in Emperor. Okay, so have a little peninsula right here, which is full of pretty awesome resources. So rice, a reef. Cattle, more stone, another reef. So that I may have that to myself. That's kind of nice. So, as I said, researching archery. So once, um, just after my settler is finished, and hopefully I'm able to claim that spot, then I'll be able to um, build an archer. And I'll build an archer and then take out that encampment right there. So... I'm assuming he doesn't have... So he's not enforcing his borders. So I can just kind of walk in and take a look at his stuff. In case you're not aware, open borders are... They're kind of a fungible thing. So for example, if you notice the dotted lines here, that means that I'm not really enforcing my open borders. So in practice, what that means is... Anyone can just walk into any borders. You have to research particular technology. I think it's might be writing, or it could be, or it could be um, something else. Actually, no, it may not be writing. It's, I think it's one of the civics. But regardless, like you actually have to research something in order to be. Oh. We've met Japan. Pleasure to meet you. Konnichiwa. Yeah, I guess I'll tell him about my capital as well. Whoa, he's really freaking far away. So I kind of forget what I was talking about, although now I've received another era score. So I'm up to four, I believe. Four out of 12. So yeah, I'm hoping to actually strike into something over here. My God. All right, so it looks like, um, yeah, I forget what I was going over earlier. Of course, I'll have to watch the videotape. Scotland. Scotland, me fall with. 
Be it through a fell that's a quiet author of Batalia. It's an honor to meet you as well. So, sure. So, Sterling is the capital of Scotland. Isn't that interesting? So, I'm not quite sure if it's really a good sign for. <laughs> uh, for in order to be like meeting so many in order to be meeting so many civilizations just right away and I hope that that I hope that that up there has not been like that that it's not sitting there abandoned so that the the Korean warrior can just go up and take it Do you know what I'll take the promotion move the slinger over this way And I may be taking some, maybe taking some. Oh, okay, so then, if there's anything down there, it would have been, it would have been found by Scotland. And it looks like there might be a city state over there, which once again probably was found by Scotland. The reason it's good to have, um, the reason good thing to, the reason it's good to discover city states first is that you get a free envoy when you do meet them. Oh, and someone else. <laughs> All right, so Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan is the one leader that I forgot about in my previous video. So he leads Mongolia, and he's all about cavalry. He just loves horses. So essentially, he just wants to be the one who trains all the horses, and he's okay if you don't ride horses. It's um, should I okay? I'll tell. I'll see where his capital is. He's way over there. Okay, so then these are just guys like, um, they're not exactly close to me, but they're exploring around. But once again, it means no, no more goody huts and no more, um, well, no more being first to discover a city-state, but I guess I'm kind of over that right now, especially with all this, um, with all of these civilizations over here. All right, so Japan sent me a delegation. I probably should start sending delegations as well. So the warrior attacked my attacked my slinger. That's not that surprising. Um, I'd like so if I attack with the slinger, that will give me a level one, and then I can kill and I can finish him off with this warrior here. And that's a good thing because now that's two barbarians that I have defeated, and then there's another. Oh, I wonder if that's I wonder if that's Cliffs of Dover right there. That's a natural wonder. Um, so, ugh. so that um, compart that encampment is free, and in all likelihood, Korea is going to go in and take it. They're going to get forty gold and get the boost for. Um, I think it's military military something um military tradition i think but uh damn it i put so much foot well i kind of had to i was forced to put so much focus on getting a settler that i would like to normally have more units at this time but just can't so we met our first city state stockholm um when if you're the first i think this might have been what i was talking about before Scotland interrupted me. When you discover a city-state for the first time, you get a free envoy. So clearly, Stockholm has been discovered by someone else. So, I mean, God, she, Scott, Stockholm's been discovered by all these people. So I don't get a free envoy. However, they want a trade route. So if I send them a trade route, then I would give them, then they would give me a free envoy. Not quite sure if I'm going to, yeah, so Korea, damn it. So Korea got the, got the encampment. Sucks to be me, but under the white battlemented crown, hushed to a depth of more than Sabbath peace. All right, the Cliffs of Dover. That was a natural wonder from previous game as well. And I got some. Okay, so I got a boost for astrology for having discovered a natural wonder. That's cool, though. I don't think I actually. So I don't get anything for having discovered the Cliffs of Dover. So don't get anything to my era score. 
So I think I'll keep my slinger here. Uh, take the promotion. And then just wait for archery to finish. Then I'll upgrade him to an actual archer. Okay. As for my warrior, I'll move him over to where I'd like to place my city. So some other asshole doesn't take, doesn't take it in my place. All right. This, um... This guy right here, I know he's only kind of at two-thirds health. I really should have him... Okay. Delegation from Mongolia. Thank you very much. Um, delegation from the Cree. Thank you very much. Everyone keeps sending me stuff. It's great. Um, yeah, so he's only at two-thirds health. I really should have him heal, but still kind of need to get freaking going everywhere. All right, so... right here that's where I'm going to place my city now these these numbers here I had seen from before this is actually the loyalty penalty that you that you get if you settle a city right there and so kind of sucks basically what it's saying is that because there are so many other cities with a higher population around you have to compensate um, you have to compensate for that so this is kind of what I'm going to need some getting used to because, damn, it can be freaking hard. I'm going to get, I'm just going to train one more scout. Um, it can be freaking hard to get, to maintain loyalty, especially like on the higher difficulty setting. So I wonder if this actually is going to be kind of like my downfall for this game. We'll just have to see if I can get it to work. Hey, I, an actual, wow, I found a friendly village that I didn't think there were many of those left, but hey, I'll take it. It would be really nice if I can get, like, a, a recon unit or something. Oh, come on, Stockholm. What are you doing, Stockholm? Damn you. All right, so let's go over here. Discover more land. Okay, so I'm going to automate. Next turn, I'm going to automate him. So I don't have to be constantly micromanaging. Huh, city-state died. Well, that's unfortunate. Not to be surprising, I guess, because because it's a large map. Oh, I'm going to be able to go to that village. Because it's a large map, and I added, like, three extra civilizations, so one city-state and two extra civilizations. Yeah, it is getting crowded, as you can freaking tell by this. All right, so let's see what's in here. And I learned about masonry. Uh, okay. Um, or rather I got a boost for masonry. What was the base? So a quarry. Oh, of course. I would have built a quarry pretty soon anyway. Damn it. So. Uh, so that's pretty unlucky. Basically, uh, there's plenty of stone around and I would have built a quarry a lot quicker than I'm going to be researching masonry. So. Hmm. Now look at it. some of these penalties up here. Minus 20. Are you serious? Oh, so is there no penalty here anymore? Uh. So there's no numbers down here anymore? Well, that's a good sign. I hope so. May I make Sweet. Suggestion? So this is kind of the first thing I need to do in order to somewhat remain competitive is that you have to settle a second city, especially because you probably notice that all of the other civs already have two cities. So yeah, I'm probably going to have to settle a third city fairly soon as well. So I'll have to um, probably, probably train a worker, probably train a worker and then train a... Um, another settler immediately afterward before I can start building up some military units to start taking on a lot of my, or at least defending myself or taking on some of my neighbors. But anyway, so this is an explanation about loyalty. Um, loyalty has to go, has to do with the amount of population that's surrounding it. So looks like this is, there's only a city of two, city of three, 
and a city of two over here. So it's not quite so bad, especially since I'm pretty close to my capital as well. Um, it probably would behoove me to possibly even make another, found another city down here, either down here or down here. Maybe this tile right here. In order to kind of like claim this valley here in between the two mountain ranges. Although, man, I know this is wishful thinking, but to get like this spot right here would be really good. But you know what? Um, for now, I think um, I'm going to... I'm going to cut it off for now. I think we made a pretty good foothold in the game, especially having founded our very first city. And I'm also going to try to keep these videos to within 30 and 40 minutes. So it's looking promising. But once again, because it's an emperor game, these do get difficult quite a bit. So we'll see how it goes. Um, uh, not, nevertheless, I'm enjoying making these videos and I hope you enjoy watching them so if you like what i'm doing like the video subscribe to my channel i'd love to have it also uh, leave me some comments i'd love to hear your feedback and i will see you next time so this is going to be the first video of probably quite a long playthrough we are only 25 turns into a 500 turn game and when you get later into the game the turns take forever so we're kind of in here for the long haul but i hope you guys are enjoying it and i hope you guys are enjoying the new expansion from Sit for Civilization 6. All right, so for now, this is Lieutenant Obvious signing out. One day I'll make it to Captain.